yes, we need to we need to feed America. But what most don't realize is that production increases as we use these regenerative practices. The only way we can increase nutrient density of foods is through healthy soil. That's rancher Gabe Brown testifying to Congress earlier this year about what he says is the key to many of the problems American farmers face. So it is called regenerative farming, and it's the idea that better crops can flourish for a lower cost, all while helping to lessen carbon emissions when the soil is kept healthy. He joins us now to talk about this growing solution and practice. Uh, Gabe, uh, it was great hearing from you uh, when we testified there, and it'll be great hearing from you this morning. Break down the basics for us, uh, for the signs of a healthy soil and what farming practices that are actually out there that still deplete the soil of nutrients. Sure, thank you, Jim. Pleasure to be with you and Stephanie this morning. So regenerative agriculture, is the process of working with nature instead of against it. You know, currently in agriculture, many of farmers, they till the soil. That tillage then, by doing so, uh, emits massive amounts of CO2 up into the atmosphere. Well, as you mentioned, we have too much carbon in the atmosphere. We need to put that back in the soil. So how do we do that? We do that through a number of practices, one of which is to eliminate tillage, another of which is to have growing plants in the soil as long as possible throughout the year. You know, often uh, farmers today, they grow a crop and then the soil sits idle. There's no living plants on it for the remainder of the year. Now, depending on your climate and where you're at, you can often grow cover crops. And those cover crops mm -hmm. then, will take carbon out of the atmosphere through photosynthesis, convert it into what's called liquid carbon, and then pump that carbon into the soil. That mitigates climate change. Another uh, thing that can be done to help this process is to get animals back onto the landscape. Today, many of the animals are grown and raised in confinement. They're in feedlots, they're in confinement buildings, you look back centuries ago, we had over 75 million bison, plus elk and deer and other grazing animals out on the landscape. We need to get those animals out of confinement back onto the landscape. And what that will do mm -hmm. then, when an animal grazes a plant, that plant then needs to take in more carbon out of the atmosphere and pump it into the soil in order to attract biology and regrow. So often people think that animals are part of the problem. They, they blame cows for climate change. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. We need more animals on the mm -hmm. landscape, grazing living plants, thus helping yeah. to mitigate climate change. You know, Gabe, we only have about a minute left here. So I was hoping you could tell us real quickly, why aren't farmers doing this and how do we get more farmers to take this action? Excellent question. And the reason is simple. You don't know what you don't know. Farmers need to be educated as to these practices and how they can not only play a part in uh, benefiting the environment, mitigating climate change, but also be more profitable because they, as they adopt these practices, they'll be able to significantly lower their input costs and put more dollars in their pockets. Yeah. All right, Gabe Brown, rancher and co-owner of Understanding Ag. Thank you for joining us today. You know, maybe the other thing too, Steph, as we look farther down the road, tie some of these subsidies to regenerative farming. But they actually make more money I, doing I regenerative farming that's, than they're making with subsidies the a lot of these farmers. That's the point.